subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. Today in Lady Mary Bath, we are visiting Bay Breeze Antique Shop in the heart of downtown Port St. Joe, Florida. It's a town that was founded in 1829 and it is three feet above sea level at its highest point, eight feet. Can't wait to take you along. Let's go into the shop and see what they've got for us today. It's such a pleasure to be in Florida with family and to get to shop locally and discover some different antiques and collections of Florida. And this is really neat. You'll see a couple more. This is from a showroom window from the 1940s. And I see lots of seashells and nautical themed items. You know, I love pictures and especially the seahorse. That is a stunning piece. I can see it filled with flowers as well as a beverage. Lots of detail. And I always look at the back stamp, and that is Schmidt. That's a company that made a lot of Beatrix Potter musical pieces. Welcome to Bay Breeze Antique Mall. They have so many great nautical things, and hope that we find some crystal and glassware as well. This picture definitely catches my attention. Look at this seahorse, you know, all about seahorses. That's the logo and symbol of Waterford Crystal. Let's take a look in the store. And we're already finding great gifts at this antique shop. Look, salt and pepper shakers for $12.95. I like that it's actually two different types of shells that they have used here for the salt and pepper. And that would be a great hostess gift, birthday gift, and actually have a set just like this. And I do feature it on my seashell themed tables. And speaking of tables, let's see what they've got for us here today. I see some kitchen essentials and some plates. Let's take a closer look. I've not seen these before, and black and white lends itself to any color. It's made by Oneida, how about that? And that would be a really great luncheon plate. I love the art glass with the Nautilus. You could even put flowers in that. I really wish that I had my car with me. I did fly into Florida, and I can even see this on top of some coffee table books to add interest. Oh, I just love all of their seashell items. And this gives me an idea. You could take even just a florist vase and fill it with some sand and seashells for a great centerpiece. Mm, I like that clawfoot bathtub and the mantle. And I've actually seen mantles in homes that don't have fireplaces. It adds some interest to a room and you can decorate around it. It's probably from one of the homes here. Oh, look at that lemon collection. It's a beautiful store and they have so many different items really just for any taste and price point. Here's another look at one of the bathing beauties. I just have to share with you, these are the Janssen Swim Girls. These were featured in the Macy's department store at Harold's Square in the 1940s. And they've got some great ones here today. The owner of Bay Breeze Antiques had actually uh, known someone that owned these for years. She had asked if she could purchase them and a resounding no. And then one day he called and offered them to her. One is for her to keep and the others are for sale. So you too could have one to add to your home or maybe pool house. And I think the perfect souvenir when you're in Florida is a seashell or sea themed item, such as the art glass that they have here. And that definitely would be something you could add to your decor. And it's not a t-shirt that you just put in a closet and you don't wear again, but this is something you can see and enjoy and entertain with. And the coral pairs beautifully with chinoiserie. You've probably seen me feature this in my dining room. And I actually have some seashells right now in my living room on the end table and coffee table. I'll have to put some pictures on social media. Look at this crystal swordfish made by the Durand Company. That would be the ultimate souvenir. Just love all of the colors and definitely you can bring 
a piece of Florida home with you. And they even have barnacles. And you don't see this in Texas antique shops, even though we are on the Gulf Coast as well, in Houston, Galveston. And Florida is definitely a unique shopping experience. Look at these oysters that have been repurposed into art. I love that they're using something local. And that would be interesting to add to even to an entryway. I love this wreath. What a great idea. You could even put that flat on a table and place a large centerpiece bowl inside for your dining room. Float a candle in it. And there's so many things I see here, but what really speaks to me are these little monks. And that's something that was part of my first collection when I was in college. These were made in Germany. And that's a handle pitcher. Look at that. And you see that back stamp? It's made in Western Germany, which means that it was right after the war, but probably more 50s, 60s. This lusterware tea set is lovely with the Asian inspired design. $89, look at that. Lusterware is becoming popular again, made in Japan. And that's something that I've seen a lot in antique shops lately. And this creamer is so sweet. I especially like creamers because you can do so much with it. It's like a small pitcher. You can use it for maybe cotton swabs in the bathroom, fill it with flowers, or use it for your tea time. And our friends at My Take on Home and Garden have a lovely collection. If you haven't seen any of their segments, you may want to tune in. I'll put a link in the video description. And you know I love cake stands. I'm hoping to feature my collection and show you the different manufacturers and some of the history. This is one of the prettiest EAPG pieces that I've seen. That's early American pattern glass. It's got a beautiful foot on it. And even though this is a new item, I like that they featured it because that would definitely add a puff of color to your white dishes. A simple butter dish to add some joy. And you can see that's a new item. I love that they are giving us some ideas here, mixing it with the vintage pieces. And that looks like a pie bird. That is to let the steam out of your pie as it's baking. Those are hard to find. I really like those. Lots of eclectic pieces. See some tiara, amber, glass. It's a great size. You could do so much with that. Place a bowl on top. Use it to serve a cake. And I think the design adds so much interest. I've seen this in different colors. And this candle holder, I really like the square shape of it. It looks old, but I'm not seeing much information on the back. It's just a great piece. For $20, put your favorite candle with it, and you know, you got a great gift. And this is typical of the China painting that the ladies did turn of the century. And it would be probably a Limoges plate. And they often painted all of the China for their household. And I see some ivy. It's not the Franciscan ivy, but it is also from California. And that lemon reamer is very versatile. It's Vaseline glass. I have the same one I use in my kitchen often. And here's that ivy pattern. Let's take a look at the back stamp. Poppy Trail, it is also from California. And it's a vase. I've not seen this piece before. A bit unusual. It's a great serving piece. And California was very influential in the tabletop industry in the 50s and 60s. This is the Desert Rose pattern. My mother had this along with the Franciscan Ivy. And I Love Lucy also had Franciscan Ivy. And just very classic California look. And that is a beautiful pattern to set tables with. And here we've got some gorgeous plates and look they've got so many of them I think this is the Miss America pattern my parents had some serving pieces and that is oh would be perfect you could even put a sherbet dish on top you wouldn't necessarily have to just use it for dessert plates it could be also for serving another type of bowl or vessel or you could even put a candle on it and I love cake stands and you know Fenton hobnail ruffled that really speaks to me I love milk glass because it's kind of like the little black dress of tabletop it goes with everything and you can dress it up or down and that is a stunning piece 
The Tom's peanut jars. My friend Judy always had these for her flour and sugar canisters. I love that touch of vintage in the kitchen. And wouldn't this be a nice clock? And I love that it's always tea time. I've not seen this before either. I love all the firsts here today at Bay Breeze Antiques. And this Pyrex I've not seen in the yellow and green either. Nesting bowls. Those must be from the 50s. Great, great colors. And they've done a good job of featuring similar eras together here. Roosters were very popular in the 50s and 60s. And Brock of California, that is a company I've not heard of. Many of the California companies either sold to larger groups, gorgeous back stamp, such as Franciscan Desert Rose sold to Johnson Brothers owned by Wedgwood, which is now owned by Fiskers. And many of the companies just didn't make it with the change in preferences with tabletop. But again, they were often acquired by larger companies. And you do have to watch out with the glaze on many of these older pieces from the California manufacturers. You might wanna do your research because there are some that you really need to be careful with. And a coral tree, doesn't that make you wanna have a nautical Christmas? How about that? Just love that idea. $35. And that would certainly be interesting to just add to your stack of mail, just to have this to keep papers together. And a candle ring. So many ideas. The Beatrix Potter is licensed by Schmid, Wedgwood, and Royal Dalton, of course, for the figurines. Many different companies use that. I have a couple of these that I collected when I was probably in the fifth grade. Beatrix Potter was my first collection. I started when I was in third grade with the figurines. And here's the Wedgwood. I actually had Bunnykin's Royal Dalton as a baby. I didn't have the Wedgwood, but I certainly had the figurines later. And of course, my kids had the Wedgwood. I love this violet pattern because I wanted to show you how at first glance it's the same pattern, but it's really not. And I think you would blend beautifully together on a table. It would be flawless. Let's look at the back stamp. That will give you some of the history. And it's $25 for the pair. And I think this is English. Let's take a closer look. Hammersley. And then if you look at the square, teacups, spring violets. Made in occupied Japan, which is the 40s and 50s. And don't they pair well together? Victorian violets. Oh, I just love this set. I hope whoever buys it gets all the pieces. Tobacco leaf baskets are very popular. You find replicas in craft stores. This is from 1925, rural Tennessee. It's the real deal. And these are often used as decorative art to hang on the wall. Some unique pieces that I'm seeing here and this pattern is familiar. My mother and her best friend Judy had some goblets that they always used for their afternoon tea. Iced tea, that is, in Texas. And this frosted grape pattern with a gold rim is something I see a lot in antique shops now. And that's an ice bucket. Of course, you could use it for snacks. And I love compotes. Have not seen this one before. This is a ruffled. It's got kind of an opalescent look to it. Isn't that gorgeous? It's sort of a neutral too. And a spoon rack. How about that? Betsy Ross, made in Japan. This would be a great addition for my charity auction for Daughters of the American Revolution, but I would have to take it home in my suitcase. And it's already pretty full. Let's take a look at all of this crystal. Of course, the blue is drawing me into so many different manufacturers here, I'm sure. And I think any of these pieces would be stunning to add to your collection, but you know, I'm drawn towards the chinoiserie. And that's a really good price too, on that blue ginger jar. Of course, you could take the lid off and use it as a vase. It doesn't have to stay just like you see it. And it looks like now we're ready for some outdoor entertainment. Look at this glider here with the two seats. It's something that probably in the 1950s they would say, oh, let's toss it, it's not in good condition. But $375, it's collected today. A lot of people like the vintage look for their outdoors. Here's some Fenton Hobnail Opalescent. That's a single candle holder. 
I just love the opalescent. There's something about it and that ruffled edge. Mm, just love it. And you can see how big this store is. I could spend all day here, Bay Breeze. Under the palm tree. And you can take that home for $89.95. Be good for a photo op. The green glasses. Oh, I think that is one of the best colors. You know, red is usually my go-to because you can pair that with just about any holiday and celebration. But green is starting to become a favorite. Don't you just love vintage glassware and especially the color green because it goes with so many different looks for your table. These are the Anchor Hawking glasses in the forest green. Aren't they beautiful with that ruffled foot? It's just absolutely perfect for any type of table setting. And these are the Cape Cod glasses with a square base. They're mid-century. Aren't they lovely? Cape Cod was one of the popular patterns of the Imperial Glass Company of Bel Air, Ohio. They started making their product in 1932 when they had additions to oatmeal. That's something that was called a premium back then, Mother's Quick Oats. And then they eventually branched out to different types of tabletop essentials. And they closed their factory in 1984. And they also made carnival glass. Let's take a look at some of this crystal. That biscuit barrel, I think, is made by Miller Rogoska. It has that design that is familiar. And this double candle holder is such a great piece. I don't think you have to have a pair for your table. This ice bucket, I thought could be Waterford Crystal. It's not often that I'm unsure. I didn't see a back stamp, but it certainly looks like it. And the Ralph Lauren vase, is in the herringbone pattern. That's something that was made for just a short time and it's very popular and hard to find on eBay in the secondary market. I have a friend that collects the Ralph Lauren and that's not a bad price when you consider it's really coveted. And some basic glass and then some interesting blue opalescent. That little creamer would be great as mentioned before for flowers or q-tips just about anything and I really like this tall dish I can see that on a mantle this waffle design is something I have not seen before lots of firsts today as mentioned and for $29.95 that's a better souvenir than some things you get at the, at the tourist spots how about that and the hob star is indicative usually of European crystal sometimes Eastern European divided dish and these are swanky swigs those are jelly glasses and they go for a lot on ebay and it reminds us of our childhood and holly hobby was one of my favorites i had a holly hobby birthday cake for my seventh birthday and just found a picture of it recently lots of good memories and these again are characters sabrina i don't really remember sabrina Sabrina calls the play. And I just think that's so neat. You certainly don't have to drink out of it. You could use it for just about anything. And these mid-century glasses are fabulous. Oh, and I see so many interesting items on this desk. That lamp really catches my attention. It's something that is a bit unusual. I wonder if it was original or if it was made into this. This is a Fenton vase that's made into a lamp and it's certainly possible i know that waterford crystal in the early days did things like that the dot ruffle and here's fenton hobnail again opalescent the store certainly represents that well in the cranberry oh can you just see that at christmas time or valentine's love that and here's some of that silver lace milk glass Oh, just love this too. I tell you, I could take this whole store home with me. It's a good thing I didn't drive. And 1940 is calling. Look at this telephone. I think it has had quite a busy life. Wonder if it was in an office or in someone's home. Because, you know, telephones weren't that cute back then. I think in the 80s, we had a choice of a couple of different colors. But in the 40s, certainly they were all black. And this plate, 1495, would be another great addition for my charity auction. A gorgeous back stamp. Historic scenes printed on Staffordshire ironstone made in England. That's Independence Hall in Philadelphia. And another great item to feature, look at these decanters. They look like figurines. 
course, you could just display them as such, but the heads actually unscrew. That's John Hancock. He signed the Declaration of Independence, and he had the largest signature. So oftentimes when people say, give me your John Hancock, that means please sign here. Patrick Henry, Riding Through Town, and Benjamin Franklin. And, you know, he was an ambassador to France. Prominent figures here that are decanters. Look at those fish platters. Oh, it's perfect for Florida. I couldn't have imagined it to be any better than it is. Look at the pink glass. Mm. And that biscuit barrel, so nice, with the opalescent green, blue. Really like that compote. And there's the Katy blue. And I think the green and the pink pair beautifully together. And this, I believe, has another piece that's missing. It could be perhaps a mayonnaise set, which is a deep bowl. And that compote. Oh, I should have taken this home. This really is a special piece that I've not seen before. You could place that in the center of a platter and make it very purposeful for entertaining. This amethyst ruffled hobnail vase would be great for Mardi Gras. Can you see that with some yellow flowers and some green accents on your table? Then you've got all the colors. $67 is a really good deal for that amethyst face. Oh, and I see some George Briard. That's something that I had seen at a collections estate sale where you probably remember me showing you all the different kitchen items and that's where I first learned about George Briard. You know, I learn as I go. I don't know everything when I walk in the door. And this is a designer that's not actually his original name. He immigrated from Eastern Europe and he created a line of tabletop and kitchen items for the housewives post-war who wanted to add a little color and style. This dish would be great for jewelry. Looks like an RS Prussia or made in Germany. Let's take a look at the back stamp. And it's hand-painted Bavarian porcelain. Oh, that's really nice. I can see that just for some tea cookies or in the vanity or in a bathroom. The strawberry plate is gorgeous. And this is a sugar shaker. I'm a huge fan. This looks like it's made in Japan. You can tell by the design it is. Lusterware. I like sugar shakers because you can use them for so many purposes, even baby powder in the nursery. Sugar for tea time, powdered sugar for strawberries. And that's Noritake from Japan. They have a vast collection of dishes here. Didn't expect that. And this plaid pattern, I can see that coming back and being popular. It would be great for fall and it is the homespun pattern. And I think they've yet to price it. And that reminds me of a tam o shanter pattern that my aunt has. And I think that was really interesting, especially if you add it to some creamware, just to maybe change it up a little bit, not have too much of the same pattern. And the corn collection is neat. Canisters, and there's a Fiesta teapot. It pairs well with this. The pitcher at $28.50, I think is a really good deal. We have some friends in Franklin, Tennessee, and their last name is Corn, and they collect lots of corn items to feature in their home, and they have a picture collection, so that would be perfect. So many great vintage dish patterns they have here, um, but the brown transferware really piques my interest, because I think that's something that could almost be a neutral, and it's full of great information with the rim, and in the center of the plate, you have some historical additions here. This is a sailing ship, the Friendship of Salem, and New York Harbor, 1830. And let's look at the back stamp. That's usually how we find out about a pattern. Original copper engravings depicting historical scenes of Chinese export to America. And this pattern and style reminds me of Zuffenheim pottery that is now part of France. My husband and I have visited their factories and acquired some pieces that we've featured in our home in Germany. And I think that I've heard the factories have closed. Ainsley Cottage Garden. I have a viewer who collects this pattern and she's actually bought a piece from my eBay store. Sugar and creamer, that is so dainty. Wouldn't that be great on a tea table? 
And this teacup looks rather plain, but I think it's got some interesting history to it. It is the royal pattern from Austria, and I'm sure that it has seen some delicious tea and great conversation. And let's take a look at this shelf to see what we find of interest. How about these hair receivers? You may have seen something like this before in an antique shop. Sort of a cover dish with a hole in the lid. And ladies of the Victorian era would pull the hair from their sterling silver hairbrushes and place it inside. And oftentimes they would create hair art and feature it in their home. Many of these were made by Nippon in Japan. My friend Judy has some hair art in her home. It's actually quite interesting. Different shades and uh, I think today we have different hobbies. That's not something that is popular, of course. I see a lovely teapot that is reminiscent of a brown betty. And some linens as well. Carnival glass. That's an all-purpose dish. Love pineapples, but especially blue and white. That definitely completes the perfect antique shop when they have some chinoiserie in blue and white. And the blue willow is a classic pattern. It's been, been made by many manufacturers. My pattern is made by Johnson Brothers, which is owned by Wedgwood. Waterford Fiskers is now the current owner. And it goes well with just so many colors. And I love the green. I'm a huge fan. I bought some at the Upscale Resale in Dallas on West Campbell Road. You might want to take a look at that segment. And I bought mine for a dollar a piece. You never know what you'll find. And this set is definitely worth it. Can you imagine how it would elevate your place setting and add that all important color and interest to your table? And that's a fair price, $18.95. So many great items here and the unexpected, of course, someone's family photos. And it's interesting that they actually put their names on the back. So I wonder how this left a family, um, but it does you know, have some historical interest and you could always give them a new home. And as expected, some really interesting nautical antique pieces. This is a compass. It's known as a binnacle. And my father sailed on ships and he explained a lot of this to me as we were in the store and just some really interesting historical pieces. I have so enjoyed my visit to Bay Breeze Antiques and I'm so glad you joined me. Lots of memorable items here today. Thanks for joining me today for the Bay Breeze Antique Mall. I've sure enjoyed my time here at this shop in Florida and next stop is Key West, I wish. <laughs> anyway, maybe next time. Thanks again for joining Lady Mary Beth. Elevate your everyday with antique shopping.